This video demonstrates the basic essentials of implementing a model view controller, MVC, design pattern into a website. You will note that there are a number of folders within the site. The view folder is where the home page and other views, also referred to as pages, are stored. Remember that a view is a web document that is sent to a browser to allow for client interaction. The model folder is where all models will be stored. Remember that a model is a file that contains all of the functions needed to interact with the database. Models and views work with controllers in order for dynamic websites to operate. A controller does what the name implies. It controls the flow of a website. It contains the logic needed to determine what interactions are being requested, call for the needed content, call for functions to build the content into a consumable format, and then deliver the content within a view to the browser for client consumption. Previous <clears throat> to implementing the MVC, the home page sat at the root of the website. It has now been moved into the view folder. We want all views to be stored here from this point forward. Now, a controller will be built at the root of the site or application folder. We want it to be accessed automatically, so we will name it index.php and store it as a sibling to all of the other folders that already exist. Once the file is created, we will make sure that an opening PHP code block tag exists at the very top of the file. There should not be anything above this code. Beneath the opening code block, we will enter a comment indicating that this is the main controller for the site. Next, we will build a simple control structure to see if a key value pair has been sent to the controller. If found, we will store the value into a local variable named action. The variable name is indicative of a desired action. It is not special. It is just what we are using. You'll notice that the control structure is looking in the get and post objects for a key also with the name of action. By using like names, it helps us follow the data through the entire process. You'll also notice that as the data is collected, we are running it through a filtering process in order to detect any undesired code that may have been sent by a hacker. Finally, since all interactions in this controller are based on the value of action, we will set up a switch statement or control structure to work based on the value stored in the action variable. For now, we will create a case with the value that, if true, will deliver our template.php file. We don't expect to use this very often, if at all. It is more for testing purposes. Then, we will set up a default case to deliver the home view. Default cases must always be last. You can learn more about the switch structure using the URL shown in the video at php.net. When the controller is accessed by the PHP engine, the action key value pair is looked for. If found, the value is stored into the action variable. The action variable is then checked by the switch structure. If no matching value is found that exists in a case statement, then the default case is activated and the home.php view is delivered back to the client browser. For illustration's sake, you'll notice that I can add a key value pair to the URL with a key of action and a value of template. This time, the controller delivers the template file. This simple illustration shows the controller at work, making decisions, also referred to as business logic, and delivering views to allow for client interactions.